Hello, welcome back. I'm Carissa, and today on the Technify Teacher, I'm going to be showing you how to annotate a PDF using an app called Kami. Let's get started. So first off, you may be wondering, what is Kami? Kami is an app or an extension that you can add to your Chrome um, browser, and it allows you to annotate on a PDF. So you can um, type, you can draw, you can make shapes, all that kind of stuff directly onto a PDF. So if you have an assignment that you are sharing with your students, whether it be a graphic organizer, or maybe it's a worksheet that you've scanned, um, and you want them to be able to interact with it using a technology device, Cami will allow you to do that. So the first thing you need to make sure to do is to have Cami added to your Google account. You can do that a couple of different ways. First off, you can add it to um, as an app to your Chrome Drive or to your Google Drive. Sorry. So if you are in your drive and you find a PDF, you can right click on it, open with. Now I already have annotate with Cami added to mine, so it shows up here. But if you don't, you would click on Connect More Apps and then you would search for the Kami app. And then once it shows up, you can there should be a button that would say install. Again, I've already have I already have it installed, so um, it shows up already, but um, that's how you can add it to your Google Drive. You can also add it as an extension so that it shows up in your toolbar. And to do that, you would just go to the Chrome Web Store You would search the store for Cami, and then you can add the extension to your Chrome toolbar, um, so that way you can access it from any website um, up in this top corner. So now, to use Cami to annotate on a PDF, you would find the PDF in your Google Drive. So here I have an assignment that I created for a book that I was reading with some of, with my class. Um, so you would right click on the PDF, you would open with and then you would select Cami. And now you can see that the document has loaded into the Cami program. So now I'm ready to start annotating. I'm going to go over some of the features that are available in the free version of Cami. So first we have markup and under the markup tools, there is the text highlighter. You can of course change the color and any, any text that you select with this enabled will be highlighted. There's also the box highlighter tool, and this just allows you to highlight text by drawing a box around it instead. Next is the strike through tool. So any text that is selected with this enabled will draw a strike through the text. And finally, the underline tool, which of course, as it sounds, will underline any text that you select. So those are all of the markup tools. Next, there is the comment tool. And with this enabled, you can change the color of the comment box or what the text is highlight what color the text is highlighted in to indicate that a comment box has been added. So here I selected gray and your students can add a comment if they like. Um, and you, of course, as the teacher can add comments to your students' documents as well. Next, we have the text box tool. This tool along with the highlighting tool are probably the ones that my students use the most and you simply click where you want to add text and start typing. What's really nice about the text tool, text box tool in Kami is that it recognizes the end of the page and won't type off the page. So students can just keep typing um, and they don't have to worry about it falling off the edge of the paper. Next we have the drawing tool. So 
not many of my students like using this because it requires them to draw with their trackpad and they tend to not like to do that. Um, but if you have a student maybe using a touch screen or who prefers to write with their cursor, um, this could be a really cool tool for them. So you can adjust the color and the transparency and it allows you to draw on the document. Um, another feature that I want to point out with this is you can see that was those lines were not quite transparent enough so I'm going to undo. Um, so anything a student does, they can always use the undo tool. I'm going to adjust the transparency so that now I can read the text through the lines. So this could be a really cool tool if you're um, if you have students who are maybe working on tracing activities with a, um, a touch screen. Next is the shapes tool. So you can adjust the width of the text or of the line. You can also adjust the transparency. And then you can draw a rectangle, circle, a triangle, or a line. And here you can see I'm combining a couple of different shapes um, because these two details go together. They're just on separate lines, so I drew a circle around them and then connected them with a line to indicate that they go together. And last we have the eraser tool. Now there are a couple of options within the eraser. You can either set it to erase any annotation that you select or only um, erase the drawings and shapes. So um, things like text boxes wouldn't be erased if you had that option enabled. And you simply just click and whatever you selected will be erased. All right, there are a couple of different ways that you can save documents in Kami. Um, the first that I want to show you is just this simple save button. If you click that, what will happen is it will save the PDF and the annotations within the Kami app program. So no changes are going to be made to any files that are in your Google Drive or wherever the student opened up the PDF. All of the changes will stay within the Kami program, which is fine. I always teach my students to click this button first because it's kind of like a backup. It does save automatically, um, but it's always good to save whenever um, you're finished or just save periodically. Another way that you can save changes, specifically if you want students to save their changes to their Google Drive, what I always have my students do is click on the download button. You can of course download to your computer and you can choose whether you want just the original PDF without any changes or if you want to save all of the annotations as well. But what I usually train my students to do, because we use Google so heavily, is I teach them to always click on Google Drive. And I want them to save with annotations. And then the file name will always have Kami Export and then the name of the, do the original document. I always tell my students to change Kami Export to their name. That way it's really easy for me to find their assignments when they're sharing them with me instead of getting all of the same document that all say Kami export if they all used Kami for their um, documents. So changing their name and add or changing the file name so that it has their name helps me and helps them stay organized. They can select the folder as well within their Google Drive. So if there is a Google Classroom folder you have set up that you want them to save it to, this would be a great time for them to select that folder. That way everything's where it needs to be and they don't have to go back and try to find it later. Now let's look at how to assign PDFs to students. Now Kami can work with multiple learning management systems, but today I'll focus on Google Classroom. So going to Classwork, and this is where, of course, you can create an assignment. I would usually give better instructions than that, but for this demo purpose, um, I'll just leave it at that. And from here, again, you can either add or create an assignment. Um, I already have a PDF that's scanned, ready to go, and it's the one that I want them to use. So I'm going to click Add from my Google Drive. And here I can find my recents. So this is showing up right away, but if I wasn't sure where to find it, I could go to my Google Drive. My PDF assignments, and there it is. 
All right, so automatically Google Classroom will designate a PDF as students can only view this file. If you want them to be able to annotate it and turn in their own copy, you're going to select this option and put make a copy for each student. Remember, if you select students can edit this file, all of your students are going to be editing the same PDF. It's like giving one worksheet to your entire class and having them all put their answers on that one piece of paper. So if you want them each to hand in their own PDF with their own annotations, you wanna make sure that you have make a copy for each student. So I also wanna show you what this looks like from the student view. So right now I'm logged into this classroom as a student. So I'm going to click on my class, I'm going to go to classwork, and I'm gonna find the assignment that I just posted as the teacher. So again, this is what a student would see in their Google Classroom. So I'm gonna click on this, and I see the document right there. Now, when you assign this, the PDF assignment to the students and you select the make a copy for each student, it automatically puts their name in the title of the document, which is really nice. So we're going to click on this. So as you can see, when the student first opens it or clicks on the PDF within the Google assignment, classroom assignment, um, it only opens up the PDF document in a um, kind of like a preview window. So for students to be able to annotate this document, they're going to have to find it in their Google Drive. All right, so the student is going to go to their Google Drive, and of course, they're going to automatically have a folder created for any Google Classroom assignments that have been sent to them. So I'm gonna click on that folder. I'm going to go to the class, and then there's the PDF that's been assigned to me. So again, they're going to right-click, open with, Cami. When they first use it, it may go through some permissions that they have to allow. They might need to sign in with their Google account, but once they do that, they'll only have to do that once. They'll never have to do that again. And here is where I can start marking up my assignment. Once they have all of their annotations done, they of course can click the save button and save now, which is what I always tell my students to do. Now you may notice that here, because it's a Google Classroom assignment, Cami has recognized that and it's given me the turn in option. This is only available if you have a premium subscription. So I just wanted to let you know that if the student tries to click turn in, it's going to ask them to sign up for a premium if they don't already have it. Um, so again, like I mentioned before, I my students only use the free version, so this isn't an option for them. So what they need to do, if you if your students are only using the, the free version, they're going to click download. They're going to save to their Google Drive with annotations. Again, I always have them start the name of the document with their first name. Um, and maybe they might add finished just to indicate that this is the finished file. They're going to begin export. And so now this is saving this as a separate document with all of their annotations into their Google Drive. So now if they go back to Google Drive, now you can see that I have the original, original document and now I have the one that I labeled as finished. So now to turn it in, they're going to go back to their Google Classroom, back to that assignment, view assignment, and again, this is the original PDF. So I want to add the document that I made the changes to. So I'm gonna click Add from my Google Drive. And I'm going to select the document that was titled Finished. And I'm going to, going to remove the original document. And now I'm going to click Turn In. And it's just telling me, just so you know, you have one attachment. Is this the correct attachment you want? I'm gonna say yes. And now I've turned in my assignment. So here's what it'll look like from the teacher's perspective after a student has completed a PDF assignment, annotated it, and turned it in. So if I go back to my Google tools and go back to the assignment that I had created, I can see that I have one turned in. So if I click on that, here's the document. All I need to do is click on it. It's going to open up the file. It's going to show me all of the annotations that the student made 
including um, any comments that might have been added. A lot of times I can complete the assignment and um, grade it from here, which is really nice. If I want, I can also go back to my Google Drive and find the assignment um, in my folder there if I want to open it up in Kami and add anything through Kami. And that's how you can use Kami to annotate PDFs. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. And be sure to like and subscribe so you can see more videos on how to use technology tools in your classroom. Until next time, keep learning something new every day.